Um, my name is Christine Casey, and I'm the head of the History of Art Department, or more properly, the Department of History of Art and Architecture. Um, and I want to welcome you all today um, to Trinity College and um, to this presentation on the department. Now, what I'm going to try to do is to give you um, a sense of um, the identity of the department. I want to give you some idea of what um, we do um, as art historians. Um, and I also will explain to you the, um, the course content in Junior Fresh, i.e. first year. Um, I'll explain to you um, the assessment. Um, and I'll give you some idea of what follows in years um, two, three, and four. Um, I'm conscious that in the audience I will have um, young people who are completing their leaving certificate. There will be um, more mature um, students or um, mature students, hopeful mature students who who would like to come back and study art history. And I'm also conscious that there are um, parents in the room who would like to know exactly um, what the nuts and bolts of all this um, will be. So I will try and give um, a broad overview, and then I leave time at the end for questions. OK, so as I said, the first thing, of course, is to um, welcome uh, you to the department. Now, um, the, what you're looking at here is um, uh, a number of images. This is actually a photograph that I had taken in September of our junior freshman group, or our first year group, um, in our seminar room. And it shows you that we are really a, a relatively small department. We take in 45 students in junior fresh. Now, we would get more than twice that number of applications. Um, you're aware of the points. The points vary depending on what you um, read with history of art. History of art can be taken only as part of a two-subject moderatorship. So you must have another um, subject. Um, so we take in 45 students. We also teach part of the um, program in ancient uh, mediev and medieval history and culture. So that's an additional um, 15 students that are affiliated to us. So in the lectures in um, junior freshman year, there would be about 60 students. Um, and some of those students will be um, mature students. And I should add, and you can see that there are some mature students in this group, that mature students make an enormous contribution. Um, every year to the teaching and learning in the department. Um, and we really greatly um, welcome them. Um, the other thing uh, you can see I've put up here, I think that this uh, small group teaching is probably the greatest strength of all the teaching in the, this faculty in Trinity College. Um, there is no other university, I think, in Ireland where you will be, have the privilege of studying in groups of about 10 with senior staff. So we, although we have some teaching assistants, um, you have access to um, lecturers at all levels in these small um, groups. So I think that's a really important thing um, to uh, bear in mind. Um, the second thing here, sight or object-based learning. Well, you all walked into the campus today. You walked through the front gate. You experienced that magnificent quadrangle at the front. Um, you know that in Trinity, we have um, a wonderful collection of manuscripts, including the Book of Duro, including the Book of Kells. We also, you will probably have noted pieces of sculpture on the various lawns through the university. We have a large art collection. And of course, we're in very close proximity to the national collection. So in a few minutes, you're across the road at the National Museum, at the National Gallery. You can walk to the Hulane Municipal Gallery. So we have direct access also to the Chester Beatty um, Library. So it, the small group t teaching is one of the strengths. And the fact that we are working directly with the college uh, 
buildings, the college collections and the national collections that are in proximity to the college. These are hugely important because it means that instead of learning being simply based in classrooms with images, you go out on site. You stand in front of these objects and uh, buildings, and that's um, hugely uh, important. Um, the other thing you can see here is um, this is a group of students in the Louvre in Paris. This is a group of students at the casino of Pope Pius IV, which is a Renaissance building in the Vatican, um, which we got special permission. It now houses the Scientific Academy um, of the Vatican. Um, and on that occasion, we got special permission. We were whisked through into the Sistine Chapel before anybody else got into it. Um, you know, by, by it, we went in the exit door of the Vatican Museums at half eight in the morning um, and had the most astonishing uh, tour. Um, so every year we have an annual, we have a study visit. Um, and we've, in, in recent years, I mean, last year we went to Venice and the Veneto the year before. Um, they went to Paris the year before, to Rome and uh, Naples. This year we're doing a country house and museum tour in England on a coach. So this is very much about getting the group together, getting everybody to know each other, and seeing things that you wouldn't normally have the opportunity to see on your own. So, for example, um, in the Veneto last February, um, we had a coach and we went to see a series of villas by Andrea Palladio, which were opened especially. Um, so we had that very, um, really wonderful experience that would be difficult to have if you were um, alone. Uh, traveller. So the four images that you see on this slide are current junior fresh, two of the site visits abroad, and this is a, a, a group of um, recent graduates. The commencement or graduation uh, takes place in November, um, and this is just some of our, our class of 2013. Um, so I think these images um, give you an idea of the um, the shape of the department. Um, just then to say a word about um, art history and the range of things that we teach. Um, I've already referred to the college collections, and you know we have the wonderful Book of Kells and other manuscripts. We have a specialist in um, medieval manuscripts. She is uh, taking a number of courses at the moment, one in the final year with students who are actually working directly with these objects. Um, she's taken photographs of the students working and you can see the excitement in their faces as they handle these um, very um, wonderful um, objects. Um, we also, of course, um, look at the um, Renaissance period. Um, and here you have an image that you all know and love, Botticelli's Venus. Um, and of course, we associate um, 15th century um, Italian Renaissance painting with naturalism. Vasari tells us that naturalism was rediscovered in the 15th century. Well, if that is so, why is the hair of Venus um, curled in this astonishingly stylized uh, way. Um, we interrogate images, we ask things of images. Um, and interestingly, this stylization goes back to late medieval aristocratic art. And people like the Medici, who were commissioning works of art, were as wanted to associate themselves with the nobility, with the aristocracy. So at one level, they wanted a new art, but they also wanted an art that had something of medieval chivalry about it. So they were buying into that older um, aristocracy. And um, this image here, you, I'm sure many of you know, uh, Manet's bar at the Folie Bergère. What are we looking at? It looks, first of all, that we're just looking directly at this beautiful uh, barmaid standing at the bar. And then we look and we see the mirror behind her. We see the people in the bar, and then we see um, a, a, a view of her from the other side through the mirror, and we see that she's talking, uh, speaking with a gentleman at the bar. And then we realize that actually we are the gentleman. We are exactly in his position. And what does that say about 
this barmaid at the Folie Bergère. What does that say about her as a woman? Um, so there are all sorts of ways of reading images. This one, for example, um, uh, in the National Gallery of Ireland, um, a lady with her daughters um, in an 18th century interior, looks as if it's just a pretty interior with a family. Um, and then you notice that um, her husband's um, tricorn hat and sword are over here. His chair is here. It's empty. All the portraits on the walls are about her husband's family, about the patriarchy. And she is just like an object, a pretty object within this um, you know, primogenitor of the, the, the property coming down um, through the family. We have a member of staff currently in Madrid. Um, he, uh, two years ago, he had the amazing thrill of discovering a Velasquez portrait that somebody thought was a 19th century portrait. It was in an English uh, collection. Um, it sold at three million following his identification and is now on the market for 17 million following conservation. He gives um, a course in 17th century painting. Um, so that's really wonderful to have access to somebody who is you know, directly involved in that kind of uh, work with um, paintings. Um, we also, of course, look at architecture. You couldn't not look at architecture um, in Trinity College. I noticed some of the students um, coming to the stand today were a little bit nervous about architecture. Will we have to draw? You know, is it very technical? And the answer is no, it's not. It is the same kind of art history, except that it applies to buildings. And this is our magnificent uh, museum building in Trinity College. Um, which is just um, behind uh, Front Square. And you can just see here beautiful Connemara marble columns, red cork uh, stone columns, um, all tile and mosaic. It looks like something from a mosque. It looks very oriental and exotic. And we would be asking, why do we have something that looks like a cross between a Venetian palace and a mosque? in Trinity College in the 19th century. So we would be asking you to consider uh, those sort of issues. This um, here is a room in a hotel in County Kildare, which was once a country house, Carton, um, the seat of the uh, Dukes of Leinster and Earls of Kildare. Absolutely magnificent uh, plaster work. And if we go to a detail of that, you can see um, this is what we're looking at on that ceiling. This is Bacchus finding his love, Ariadne. And um, when we look at that, we look at, it looks very solid. But when we think about technique, this is all made of lime, water, and sand. It's, complete, it's almost not there. Um, and it's not solid at all. It's modelled on stiffened sackcloth because if it was solid, it would all fall off the ceiling. Um, so we would be looking at technique, wondering about how things are made, um, wondering about why the Earl and Countess of Kildare wanted groups of the loves of the gods on their ceiling in Carton County Kildare in 1739. What were they trying to do? Um, their son at that point, the future Duke of Leinster, was the age of many of you in this room. He was a young man on the Grand Tour. He, they were earls, and his father wanted a dukedom for him. So what did he do? He bought a country um, estate, built a magnificent house, adorned it in this way, and made a grand political statement about the future of the Kildare dynasty. So these are the ways in which we will we interrogate um, images. So history of art, in a way, is like history, but instead of using documents, we do use documents, but we focus on the work of art, and we use the documents around that to interpret the um, work of art. Um, and as I said, um, it's very much in the, in the junior fresh year, in the first year, we get you out there looking at the um, images. Um, and so you would be going to the National Gallery, you would be choosing an image to write um, about. You would be looking, here's a group of students, um, we have a, a building which is the old Provost Stables. 
in Trinity. It's a wonderful building. Um, it's the Trinity Research and Irish Arts Centre, and we teach um, in that building. And you can see these students are looking at um, original Renaissance drawings um, and prints. So again, um, a very um, hands-on approach. This is um, last spring at the Palazzo del Te in Mantua, which is a, um, a, a Mannerist or Renaissance palace. Um, and this is the uh, group of students. This is the kind of size of group that you could expect um, going on those trips. This, we don't, you don't draw in history of art. This is just a drawing. I thought I'd show it to you because some of the students very few might have come from a background where they are drawing. And this young woman came from uh, the National College of Art and Design. She spent a year there. She decided she didn't want to do practical art. She wanted to do history of art. And when we were going around uh, Vicenza and Venice, she had a notebook. And she made all these uh, wonderful drawings, some of which we've used. We've actually published them in some of the departmental literature. But um, this is more what the students would be doing, making their notes in a small notebook about what they are um, seeing. And that's just another group in the house of Andrea Mantegna, the Renaissance painter in um, Mantua. OK, so um, I'll move then from giving you an idea of the um, topic um, to um, explaining what is actually um, done. Um, because we are half of your two-subject moderatorship, you need to take 30 credits with History of Art. So you have 30 credits with History of Art and 30 credits with your other subject. The, the, this is divided into three 10-credit courses. Um, and you can see... The first of those courses is Introduction to European Art and Architecture 1. That takes place in this term, so that's finishing next week for the students. And that covers classical antiquity to Renaissance, some of which you'll be familiar with, but it will deepen your understanding. Then in the second semester, you pick it up at Renaissance and you go up to 20th century. So that gives you, again, the survey into the modern period. And again, that's worth 10 uh, credits. Um, there is an exam at the end of the year. Um, two papers, uh, one for each of these modules. And you have uh, photographs and um, essay questions. The exam is 90% of the grade at the moment. That may change. Um, the 10% goes for slide tests, two slide tests, each 5%. Now, I'm going to explain what this is because I think it may confuse um, people. Um, I'll go back into this PowerPoint. What do we mean by a slide um, test? I'll just show you. Um, no. When you enroll as a student, for your junior fresh or your first year. You have access to electronic material. And it's called Blackboard. Now, all the universities do this now. So here is the Blackboard page for Introduction to European Art and Architecture. And if you look on the left, you'll see lectures weeks 1 to 6, lectures week 8 to 12, um, assessment. You get a lot of information here. I'm just going to show you um, how it works, you click on the lectures, this should work, and you can see that every lecture, all the images that you see in each lecture are up on this site. So if you open um, Giotto here, hopefully he'll open up, um, you will get a PDF, um, or you should get a PDF. <laughs> um, is my technical person here? You may get it now. Well, it lo is it loading? Yeah. yeah. So there you see the range of images. Um, which 
you would then be able to study. And based on those images, then you have what we call a slide test. And the slide test would take a small number to trust those images. So in other words, 10% of the assessment in um, junior fresh, how do I get my, my PowerPoint back up? Uh, the orange, yeah. This one? Yeah, yeah. 10% um, of assessment in junior fresh is um, slide test. Um, I'll get back in here. Yeah. Um, and the rest is the usual um, written um, exam. Okay. Um, the third module in junior fresh, so you've got the two survey modules. The third module is the introduction to the practice of art history. And that is examined on continuous assessment um, only. So two of the modules worth um, 20 credits are exam and slide test. And then the third module is um, uh, awarded in this way. And you can see you have a painting assignment, an architectural assignment, an essay on painting, an essay on um, architecture. And you've got to submit all of the coursework to pass this module. So it, this is what we find is that the students really like continuous assessment because they have complete control over it. So what you've got there for across this junior fresh year is a combination of um, exams and coursework. Two modules with principally exam and a small amount of um, uh, coursework in the slide tests. And then the third module, the third 10 credit module, examined by coursework uh, submitted uh, during the year. Now, some other people asked me about the number of hours that you spend in history of art. And what you have is um, four lectures per week on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. So that's four lectures. You have a seminar every week, so that brings it up to five. And then you have, at intervals, site visits. And you can see the, what the, these site visits are. A walking tour to introduce you to the institutions, an architectural tour of the campus, an architectural tour of a church, a visit to look at sculpture, and as you can see, visits to the National Gallery. So you can see that there are nine of these across the year. So these are an additional benefit um, in terms of learning and in terms of the um, introduction. Um, to, um, to, to the national collections. Okay, I'm not going to go into it in detail. That's the junior fresh. That's the first year. I just want to give you some small sense of what happens after first year. After first year, you still have to take 30 credits in history of art each year. And that will consist of modules, 10 credit modules, or five credit modules, mostly 10 credit modules. You can choose from a range of options. And in any one year, a number of options uh, will be um, offered. So here you can see this year we have um, Antiquity and Innovation in Early Medieval Art. Art and, well, this is not available this year because of sabbatical. Architecture in the 19th and 20th century. Painting and sculpture in the Italian Renaissance. Art in France, that's Impressionism et al. Um, modernism and postmodernism. And you can do an option in uh, the classics department. So out of those, if you're in your second year, you must choose two. When you're in your third year, when these are running, you must choose two and the same in fourth year. So out of this wide range, over the three years, you would pick six options. The only um, onus that we put that we insist that you have one architecture option out of the six, and we also monitor it to make sure that you don't do all medieval or all modern, so that we try and get um, a, a good mix over your, um, over your three uh, years. Um, 
So, and these, these sometimes vary if staff are away on sabbatical, but that's really the kind of range that you uh, have. And there you can see year two, um, you have 30 credits, so you have two option courses and two five credit compulsory courses. Um, so your commitment in terms of time across each of the years is roughly similar. So we're talking about, you know, five, six um, hours across um, each um, year. Um, so that's really, um, to, I, I hope, has given you um, some idea of what's involved in history of art. Um, and uh, if anybody has any questions, I'd be very happy to answer them or try my best to answer them.